Matt, this week you're looking at specific and latent heat. So uh, what you'll be learning in the lab is how to experimentally obtain values for both the specific heat and the latent heat of water, as the title of the lab suggests. And this is how you'll be doing it. So part one, you'll be focusing on the specific heat of water. Um, so this here is the equation. Um, so you'll be heating the water in a calorimeter using um, a filament which is a current going through it, which heats up the filament, which then heats up the water. So the equation here says the heat is equal to the mass times the specific heat, which you'll be measuring, times the change in temperature of the body of water. And this is the power equation that's happening when you're supplying heat to the system. So um, <clears throat> the power that you supply should be equal roughly to the heat divided by the time that you're applying that power for. So if you substitute the power equation into your thermodynamic equation, then you'll get a relationship between the temperature and the time that you're heating it with a constant power source. In the second part of the lab, you'll be looking at measuring the latent heat of water. So you're looking at a phase transition from the solid state of water, that is ice, to liquid water. And you'll be again doing this, um, measuring the temperature change in the calorimeter. Uh, there's an expression in your lab manual that shows you the complete um, version of the equation, but basically um, this is the main part of it. It's just the heat is equal to the mass times the latent heat of the object. However, it's a little bit more complicated because you've also got to take into account the aluminium of the cam, etc. Okay, so the first part of this experiment, you'll be looking at calculating the specific heat of water. Um, so just one note, make sure when you're setting up the calorimeters, because you have two, that you're using the one that has the heating filament inside, because that's what we're wanting to do in the first part of the experiment, heating the water. So when you've set up your equipment, your circuit, it should look something like this. Um, ask your demonstrator if you need help setting up. Um, and just another note though, when your uh, multimeter is plugged in as a voltmeter, make sure you've got the setting on this V uh, with the, the dash and the dots underneath because that's for DC voltage which you're measuring and for the current you want it on this last setting um, that just says A. So when you're ready um, you want to close your circuit but please uh, make sure a couple of things that you keep the circuit open while you're still checking things and before you have your demonstrator checked it and also make sure that the water levels in your calorimeter container um, is submerging the heating filament because if you turn the circuit on and it's not submerged then you can uh, overheat your filament and burn it out and we don't want that happening. So when you're ready everything's turned on, hit close, make sure you've got your temperature probe in and hit record. Okay and you want to make sure that you're stirring constantly. So if you stop stirring then you're going to get something flat like this So you need to make sure you're constantly stirring the whole time so you get a good linear trend that you can analyze when you're done. <laughs> okay, so when you're done, make sure that you open the switch so that the current's no longer flowing through. And you should have a straight line that looks something like this. So now what you want to do is just highlight a straight segment of the graph. Um, so if you've got anything like this where you've slacked off in stirring, just uh, don't, don't record it because you want your uh, gradient based off the best line fit. So to get that linear fit, um, you'll be using this button up the top. It looks like a blue curve with a red line over the top. So click that and then it'll tell you what your slope and intercept is. And then you can get on with the rest of this part of the experiment. Okay, so for the second part of the experiment, uh, you can get rid of most of your equipment. All you need here is some ice, some paper towel, and the other calorimeter that just has a spot for your last thing, which is the temperature probe. Um, just one thing I'll mention, and this applies to the last lab too, uh, the last part. Um, when you're weighing your cup, make sure that you don't forget to take into account the mass of the stirrer itself. So you can unscrew this and then weigh these two things together and that will give you an accurate measurement. So when you're ready and you've got all this back together, you can hit uh, record. 
Okay, so you want to stir a bit and make sure that your line's flat because you want to be at equilibrium before you add your ice. So this is important, so just stir for a bit until it reaches it. Okay, so once you're confident that you're at equilibrium, you want to grab some ice, make sure that it's dry when you put it in, and keep stirring. Okay, and so you want to keep stirring until you reach a new equilibrium, so when the line flattens out again, and that looks about now, so I'll go ahead and stop. Okay, and so this is the sort of curve that you should have. If you want to scale it, you can hit this A button at the top again. Um, and so the, when you examine it, the areas that you're interested in is before. This will give you your before temperatures, and afterwards will give you your after it's melted temperatures. So don't forget that after you've done this, you need to weigh your can again. Um, otherwise, you'll just be repeating that using different amounts of ice and different amounts of water. Okay, so just a few minor things to look out for in this lab. Uh, one, make sure you don't forget your power measurements when you're doing the first part of the experiment. So you need to make sure you record the current and voltage at um, the three periods that it tells you to. So just be careful you don't miss that. Uh, secondly, don't forget to continuously stir your water, otherwise you will not get a good linear trend and your results will not be very good. In the second part of the experiment, do not forget to dry your ice, otherwise you'll be adding both water and ice to your experiment and so your, revolt, your results will be skewed because of that. And finally, make sure you understand these uh, basic thermodynamic equations and understand what's happening um, when you will lose or gain heat to the system and how that will affect your values for C, L and Q.